ladies and gentlemen. Now, to give you a bit of a rundown of what happened in the live stream in a minute before we talk about everything in detail, uh, they showed some Morbius gameplay, and this man is absolutely pumping. He's got some pretty insane utility as well. Um, there's also the new Iron Man boss in 8.3, Serastes, and the rewards for 8.3, 100% look absolutely cracked. Like, we're going to talk about these in detail, but there's like a six star rank five gem crystal. There is a generic seven star rank up gem, one to two. There's also like half another ascended six star champion as well. A fully formed seven star, Titan shards, like crazy stuff. Now, next up, we got Deathless Champions. And I think this is more aimed at the sweatiest grinders and also the whales, the spenders in this game. So you collect like five pieces, very similar to Platinum Pool. For the first one, Deathless Guillotine, you get the first one for free, but in order to get the second piece, I believe you need to hit the victory track in Battlegrounds. So that is a massive, massive requirement in terms of the roster and skill you need, especially with kind of, you know, matchmaking stopping after, what is it, Platinum uh, 2 and above. Um, so yeah, it's really tricky for anybody that is below that unless they fundamentally change the matchmaking to get up there. Um, so yeah, I think it's more aimed at like the super sweat lords, but again, these champions are going to be seven stars right away there, and I think are going to be really cool looking. So something to keep kind of the whales engaged, the spenders, and also the super sweaty hardcore grinders. Again, I don't know 100% if you are like the Brian Grant of this world, if you can play this game for free, do all of the challenges, um, without spending, if you're 100% going to be able to get guillotine or all of the characters. Um, but if you do manage to get four of them, then you actually get a fifth one for free in the year 2025, which seems a little bit, you know, long term to think about considering we're in 2023 at the moment, but there will be a big champion coming for you in 2025 if you get all of them. So yeah, it's hard to give early thoughts on this. Again, I do hope that they keep this um, related to high skill in-game challenges and that even if you aren't a spender, but you are like the sweatiest committed grinder, you're still able to get this. Um, granted, again, I think this is going to be a very, very big challenge to assemble all 18 pieces there. But also, I think this kind of nails a core element of the game of a lot of people have felt like for the last few years it's actually not worth playing the game because there are no special rewards to play in the game. It's all about logging in on the 4th of July or Cyber Monday and spending $1,000. So I like that they are having kind of this uh, this fairly unique approach on this one. Um, and I, I think it's going to be cool. I'm really excited to see these champions, man. I think, um, you know, it's an interesting way to update some of these champions to seven star, make them a little bit different, uh, but also, you know, experiment with some very cool visual effects as well. So yeah, I'm not really too sure if this is like a connecting theme. It's just a guess here. But from Thanos's army, we did have like a, a corrupted version of like Guillotine, Hyperion, Scarlet Witch. There was this amazing looking King Groot. I really hope that King Groot is one of the champions and also Vision as well. So yeah, I'm curious to see if these are going to be the five characters total or whether or not like Thanos also may be an option. Now, moving on to the bulk of the news about 8.3. So the release date of 8.3 is going to be October 18th. If you didn't play the beta of this, they've actually heavily shortened down the amount of paths you need to do to do 100%. Every single quest, instead of having six, only has three paths. So this, along with a rewards update, actually may make it the best piece of story content that they've released in about five years. Like, I don't think I've been excited for the rewards this much since probably the release of, like, Act 5.4 at the time, because Act 6, dude, was, was a pretty big miss all around. Like, Act 7, I didn't find, like, terribly exciting personally. But the completion for this one, you've got a Rank 4 gem, a Rank 3 gem, there's 5,000 seven-star shards, and also 8 times 24. 5% of a T6 class catalyst crystal. So, you know, a lot of dispersed fragments, but essentially you've got um, uh, two T6 CCs there, which is very nice. You got 1.5 million gold and a five star relic crystal as well. So yeah, the completion rewards, again, they're all right. They're not kind of like game breaking or eye popping. It really is those exploration rewards, dude, that are just so crazy good. 
Now, the really interesting thing about this as well is that they are streamlining the story content, apparently moving forward. So with Act 8-3, if you saw on the beta, instead of six paths in every single quest, you've only got three. So you've got the initial completion run and two more runs you've got to do in every single quest. And that is so much better than doing one run and then having to go back like five times, dude. Always felt like a massive chore there. Um, so not only are the rewards much better, but the grind is significantly, significantly less in comparison to what it has been previously. And again, you got that rank five gem, the rank four gem. You've got a seven star generic rank one to two gem. Just take up any champion. You got your seven star crystal, a hundred tier two primordial dust. There's a nexus five star relic, like 2,500 titan shards and three million gold. So we're going to see how this plays out, but at least on paper, it's looking incredibly spicy. It really seems like for the first time in about five years, honestly, they've really got that kind of like effort to reward ratio right in story. So yeah, hopefully there just aren't too many paths that are complete clown fiesta. But from the beta, it doesn't seem like, you know, there's too much headache with it. Now, next up, we're going to talk about the champion that the community has such an eye on at the moment because this is the cheapest new champion Kabam have ever offered by a country mile. It was via the triple battle pass bundle. If you've been playing over summer, you brought all three battle passes. You've been sweating them out daily, just making sure that you're staying on top of, you know, getting your points, advancing that. You know, you're just about to hit the finish line and get your third Morbius stamp. But the big question on everybody's mind is, is Morbius a good champion or is he going to be an absolute disappointment? And I must say, initially looking at him on this like deep dive preview stuff, he is looking like an absolute banger. He is like kind of like a kiddie pride like ability where you can just like phase through certain special attacks. He has huge burst damage off that special too. And I think um, if you look at this matchup here and the special two that's about to be dumped on Rincher Man, is just crazy. There is a huge amount of burst damage that Morbius does bring to the table, which I think is just going to be so good versus like many Mystic Champions. But I think the really interesting thing as well, and this is kind of the two parts of Morbius, like we we knew because we we're getting Morbius so cheap, dude, there was, there was going to be something on the Awakened ability that was like, you know, really spicy, really good, that wants to hook you in, that's like, oh, I've got a, I've got the seven star Morbius, I need to buy the crystals now, or I need to buy an Awakening bundle on Cyber Monday. But it does look like even unawakened, Morbius is still going to be a banger. You still, I believe, have the ability to psionic glide and phase through certain special attacks if you do time it right, and also get access to that big burst damage off the special too. It looks like the awakened ability is linked into an undying effect, which prevents him from dying to fun and interactive damage. So I think this is degeneration. I'm not too sure how much this extends into like other damage over time abilities. But here, and again, I believe this is tied into the Awakened ability. If you have a look very closely, you got the stacks of degeneration from Kindred, get him down to 1%, but now he cannot die because he has like a passive damage effect on him. I, again, I'm not too sure if it's passive or active effects or exactly all the champions this interacts with. Um, but as we know from certain champions like Immortal Hulk and Hercules and also Hela in some scenarios as well, like Immortality in the right scenario is just absolutely busted. Like it is crazy, crazy good. So at least initially, I think there's, you know, a few things to be excited about for Morbius's uh, release next month. You know, he seems like he's going to be a solid champion. And I think, you know, all we wanted from like, what is it, a $25 seven star champion was him to like not completely suck. And it, it seems like he's at least met that minimum bar uh, as a seven star unawakened champion. But we'll have to see again. I think the also the ability to just like phase through special attacks as he does in that Doctor Doom matchup. I'm just incredibly excited to watch players much better than myself just use the phasing in all sorts of creative ways against like special attacks. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really interested to watch some of the community Morbius gameplay. There's going to be so much of it. Again, this is probably going to be like the most owned seven star champion or one of them uh, after his release because yeah, just like so many people went in for that uh, uh, Battle Pass bundle there. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts on how your first impressions are of Morbius in the comments section below. Maybe some matches that come into mind. Overall, the live stream was a bit of a banger. I'm quite excited for everything that's coming out. I'm interested to see the rollout of Deathless Champions and how Kabam handled those. 
Um, I think Kabam, generally speaking, the last couple of months have done quite well on creating rewarding events in the game. I think some of the big problems that they have at the moment is just like random fails. Uh, like this month's side event, right? Like doing the tier 8 one is so goddamn boring. Like that sucks. It's incredibly repetitive. And also like the Caps Commissionary event is just a bit confusing and like uh, just not the coolest event ever. You know, it's, it's a little bit lame. But there have been a couple of misses alongside a large arsenal of wins as well. So you win some, you lose some. And it's nice to see Kabam kind of be in a state at the moment where they're actually winning some. Because if you've played Marvel Contest and Champions for a while, they've they've gone through phases a little bit earlier this year as well where, you know, they just don't get wins for a hot minute. And it's uh, it's nice to see, uh, you know, a lot of really good stuff coming out of Kabam at the moment. And I like that they're kind of open to trying kind of new formats and experimenting, um, especially with like champion acquisition and reward acquisition, like having, you know, new seven stars straight in the battle pass and having, you know, these new exclusive seven stars uh, via, I believe, tough challenges in the game, such as getting to the the victory track in Battlegrounds, um, I think is going to be a really cool way to do that stuff moving forward. And again, I hope the game continues to get to a point where it's more about playing the game and less about just logging in for the 4th of July or Cyber Monday and spending $1,000 on all the offers. Surely there's going to be that as well, you know. Uh, Kabam love milk in the whales, but it's nice also to see some focus kind of returning to actually playing the content in the game and rewarding people for playing the content in the game. That's something I like. Uh, so yeah, ladies and gentlemen, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Smash that like button if you enjoyed today's breakdown. Take care, and I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day.